Hey everyone, Jim with Infinity PBR here, and in this video I'll create this Sleeping Dragon treasure room scene to show you posing characters with U-Motion, a free animation tool for Unity. You've probably been disappointed to find that Blender doesn't understand the rigs and animations from FBX files from other programs, but even if Blender did work, I'd still use U-Motion because it's really great to keep things in Unity, and I say that as a Blender guy for about five years now. Anyways, this isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial because I think your projects are probably too unique for that, so instead I'll build out something conventional but cool and talk about what I'm doing as I go. Now that I have the train down, I'm going to start posing the dragon. I have the community version of Umotion installed and imported, and I'll bring up the Umotion windows. So in Window, Umotion Editor, I'll bring up the Clip Editor. And then I'll dock this window where you'd normally put your animation or timeline window. And then I'll go to Window and Umotion Editor and bring up the Pose Editor, which I'll put in the spot where the inspector usually is. Then we have a prompt here in the timeline, load a Umotion project by clicking on File. So I'll click on File and click New Project. And since dragons aren't humans, I'll pick Generic. And then there's a prompt to save the project. So I'll save it as Dragon Sleeping Pose. All right, so the next step is to drag the dragon into the game object slot. And then we have some prompts, so I'll create configuration. And we can also animate blend shapes with U-Motion, which would be pretty cool with all the custom blend shapes that Infinity gives us. But I'll save that for another video. So I'll click Add to Root for now. The first thing I want to do is hide all the bones I'm not using. So I'm not going to be using the rider or the reins. So in the pose editor, I'm going to switch from pose mode to config mode. And whenever I select a bone or hold shift and select a bone, which uh, selects the whole chain of bones, I can see what I've selected in the rig hierarchy. So I'm selecting all the bones I want to hide. And then in configuration, I'll go into properties and I'll click hide. And don't worry, you don't have to remember everything I'm telling you. I'm just pointing out things so you can jump into the program if you want and find your way around. Okay, so with all the bones hidden, the dragon is ready to be posed. I'll switch back into pose mode for posing the bones. And you might be wondering what the difference is between free and the paid version. Well, one big difference is that if you go to file and import clips, it will give you a prompt that this is only for professional users. So with the free version, you can't bring in ad any animations that you might have in your project folder. And that's really, really useful. As an example, I used Umotion in our recent shader video where I took idle animations for the characters and modified them. So if you look at the half orc, it's the regular idle animation, but I rotated his arm so he's carrying the club casually over his shoulder. Before I start in working on the dragon, I want to mention a couple more programs to help you in your process. I never do any pose or animation work without reference. On my second monitor, I have a program called Pure Ref, where I've collected some different images to refer to. Another program I use to annotate reference photos is called Epic Pen. And both of these programs are free, and I think they're perfect together because they're really simple and they have this there when you need it, out of the way when you don't, uh, UX or user experience, if you aren't familiar with that term. So how I use these, well, first I'm going to right click on Pure Ref and make it so that this window is always on the bottom. That way I can draw on top of it. No need to be intimidated here. This is really easy and actually fun. I'm just going to highlight things that I like about these images. So I think it's essential for this pose to have the head over the front leg, like this dog and in the fantasy images. I also like that you can see both of the feet from the front, and you can also see that on this sleepy guy too. Oh, and I'm just going to annotate what these programs are, Epic Pen and Pure Ref. Being creative is often about just putting something in front of your eyes and trying to make sense of it. Like, why would the dragon be in a pose on a tree that the lion is in in this photo? Well, maybe it's a jungle dragon. Or maybe something happened to the dragon while it was flying and his wings were damaged and he landed in a huge tree and is stuck there. On this image, I like how the front legs are crossed, but the sort of flop over sleep is maybe too friendly or cute for the treasure room scene. So I'll just make note that this is a great pose for a dragon familiar, like a friendly sidekick dragon. Now, this adorable picture raises some 
interesting questions. I love the idea of a dragon sleeping in something that it fits in sort of perfectly. It feels like a very animal thing to do. But what would be large enough to fit a dragon like this? Maybe a hollowed out building or a cistern or a fountain of some kind. So after I've made a few notes, I'll click on this little camera on Epic Pen to take a screenshot of all of my annotations. And I'll put that back into PureRef or just keep it saved in the folder with my other images. And a little extra tip here for the shortcuts for Epic Pen, I use Control Shift and then the regular keys that you would use for shortcuts, which keeps things out of the way from other programs. So Control Shift X to clear my screen, Control Shift Z to undo anything I've done, uh, and it works well. All right, I'll get back to Unity. And before I start, I want to go to Auto Key and select Generate so that when I rotate and move the bones, the keyframes generate. Rotating, scaling, and moving the bones use all the same shortcuts you're familiar with. W to move, E to rotate, and R to scale. For this pose, I just want to stretch the dragon out flat uh, in the front and then in the back fold his legs under. Since the wing bones can get in the way, you can go to display and change the bone style to be wire, stick, or solid. I'm going to work with the wire for a while. Another useful feature is that in tools, there's a one button copy to other side. So you can pose one side of the model and then copy it to the other side. So I'm going to do that for the wings. I'm also going to scale some things, and I don't expect you can get away with this with humans, but uh, in a fantasy creature, we can get away with a little bit of scaling here and there. And it's often useful to straighten things out before you move them, starting with the first bone in the chain. There's also a local rotation tool you can use if you are trying to do something where the gizmo rotation feels kind of frustrating. The pre-pose of him stretched out will look pretty weird, but it's going to be much easier to lock into the pose from here. And I'm just going to time lapse my work for this part pretty fast. Now that I have a decent draft pose, I'm going to click on the top keyframe, which selects all of them. And I'm going to control C, copy, control V, paste the keyframes down the timeline a little bit. So I have a few keyframes because the Unity animator won't work with only one keyframe on your animation. Then when I go to file export clip or export all clips, it will prompt us to uh, bring up the export settings where we can select what folder we'd like to export the animations to. Then I'll close the Umotion settings and go back and do File Export Current Clip. Now, I don't have to close Umotion to start painting the terrain, which is pretty awesome. But you might want to lock the terrain window so you don't accidentally click on the dragon and click off of the terrain. So I'm going back and forth, painting the terrain and posing the dragon, moving the camera, and I'll time lapse this work as I refine things. All right, things are looking good, so I'll export this clip again. And then I'll start working on the environment a little bit. I've included my Scrooge McDuck gold coin pile texture in the link below in case you wanted to use it for something in one of your own projects. It's pretty fun to paint the gold on a terrain. Now, when I close the Umotion project, the dragon will go back to the default pose. And at that point, I'll go into the dragon's animator and either add a new state and bring in the animation to that state or just bring in the animation. Now, one thing I forgot to do is copy my keyframes and paste over the previous pose that I had later on in the timeline. So you can kind of see that there, there's my latest pose and my earlier pose. So I'm just going to, again, select that top keyframe and copy it and paste over the second one. And then I'll export the current clip again. And this icon here is where you can add a new clip and then you can type a name other than clip one. You can also duplicate the current clip if you want. Oh, and it looks like you can change the default name in the clip settings. All right, now that my animation is fixed, I'll bring it in and then I'll right click on entry and select set default state. Then I'll go to the clip editor and close the Umotion project, which brings our dragon back to the default pose. I'll press play. And then in play mode, while the dragon's in this pose, I'll actually copy the dragon, the copy the game object, control C, and then outside of play mode, I'll paste the dragon. 
That way I've changed the default pose of the dragon in edit mode, so I'll delete the other dragon. This way the dragon is posed in edit mode so I can go in and refine the terrain and the lighting and even add some atmospheric effects with Aura 2. And I'm sorry to mention yet another program, but Aura 2 is amazing for volumetric lighting and fog and haze effects. And in this case, I really love the effect because it's like the dragon has been sleeping with this treasure for hundreds of years, exhaling smoke. All right, so I'm gonna save this and bring up the scene I created when I was planning this project. In other words, this is my first attempt. Now let's take a look at the one I made in the video, which I think looks a lot better. And now I'll show you the one I modified for the thumbnail with all the bells and whistles. And I also brought in some treasure chests from the Infinity PBR Mimic Pack, which includes treasure chests without teeth and tongues. And to make this image stick out more, I'm using the main shader in Toonie Colors Pro 2. On a tiny thumbnail, these bright highlights really make the dragon pop. So if you get a chance, take a look on the channel and you'll see what I mean. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. And don't forget to grab this free gold in the link below on your way out.